Hey guys, welcome to, welcome to another video on my Commander Blade, and this is your review for the Chelsea versus Manchester City game, which ended 2 1 to Manchester City. We have a defeat, and um, <clears throat> you know what? I'm not that upset because the game went exactly, exactly how I thought it would go. I said we'd lose 2 1, and the game went exactly pinpoint. If I put money on this game for the events to happen, I'll be a millionaire right now. I called it, I called it. The lineup, the score prediction. And obviously I'm not happy because obviously we lost and we gassed out after 25 minutes. That is the brutal truth. Now obviously before I do get into it, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you are on here. Make sure you hit the notification so you're notified for every time I upload and comment down below, etc. Obviously the lineup was spot on. I thought Frank Lampard, he got the lineup perfectly correct. Kepper in goal, uh, Emerson and um, Aspilic Guetta, Zuma and Tomori, Jorginho, Kovacic and Kante. The perfect midfield that I needed Lampard to play. We then had, of course, Pulisic, William and Abraham Pulisic did make it for the game. So that was really, really good, good news. Um, we had a bit of a shaky one or two minutes, but then we grew into the game and tactically... We outpressed Man City, we outclassed them. The way of moving the ball, progressing it, being press resistant, moving the ball quickly and progressing it in between lines. And Georgina and Kovacic were pivotal and so important in doing that. They were so effective. These players, they're so good to us. And it's the reason why Manchester City were after them yeah, you know, a couple of seasons ago. These two players are world-class and obviously <clears throat> these two are the main reasons why we had such a right start in the first 25 minutes. Obviously we went 1-0 up which is fantastic, I was so happy with that. Obviously I went mental and Kante put it into the back of the net, I went mental, I was like yes! Of course we should have probably scored a couple more, Tomori had a beautiful chance from a corner, just goes wide. Mount had a free kick in the last minute that also just about goes wide. So we had chances in the game to score more. But so did Man City. I think that I think that I would say 2-1 is a fair reflection. Now, of course, at half time it was 2-1, and I thought that it was an unfair. It did not represent the game itself. I believe that when it went 2-1 down, it was so unfair and it was all self-inflicted. It was mistakes that scoreboard errors that you should be making. We don't want to up. And that's where you need to keep composed, you need to keep calm and keep progressing, keep pressing. And Jorginho makes a mistake. It can happen, he slips, and a deflected goal, and Man City again undeserved the equaliser. But that's the moment you have to get leaders and you have to, as players, step up to the plate where, you know, it's only 1-1, one, one, guys. Let's pick ourselves up. Let's keep pressing. We got this. But no, it was all self-inflicted mistakes. We somehow capitulated. And then within five minutes, the second goal came in Mares. Uh, of course, Gundogan, um, Rodri, he passed into Mares. Mares then dashed past Emerson. I don't know what man was doing. He got decimated and then he just cut inside his left foot, threw legs to Mori. Kepa couldn't see till late. And it nestles, nestles into the far corner. But... The thing I want to mention is I don't want to blame Emerson too much. I think that Kovacic was at fault for that goal. I think that the main reason what happened, what was happening tactically was Pep tactically found out after the first half an hour what was happening. I think he was so clever, hence why he's a world-class manager. But with what was going on, is you know Emerson's a top left back, but what they were doing is they were 2v1-ing down the left-hand side, down the left-hand side of the flank, hence why we're getting outnumbered. And that's why we that's why we conceded two easy goals, two easy goals for, uh, that were scored by Manchester City. And... We kind of capitulate in that sense. We just couldn't muscle him because it was a 2v1 situation. That's where Kovacic, he let himself down there. Of course, what was happening is uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Mahrez were doubling up on Emerson. Hence why it became a 2v1 and hence why the second goal came. Because obviously, they doubled up on Emerson and Mahrez was able to have that free space and a half space to go and score the second goal for Manchester City. And that's where Kovacic needs to be tighter to Emerson, be on Emerson's left-hand side to make that 2v2 with Kovacic and Emerson against Kevin De Bruyne and Riyad Mahrez. Have that 2v2 to block those spaces. And what happened was Kovacic, he didn't mark his space. Hence why they doubled up on Emerson. It was a 2v1 and Emerson got completely exposed. And it's natural. If, you have a, if you're playing 2v1 at that high football level, you're going to get exposed. It's as simple as that. It was not Emerson's best game. He didn't play well whatsoever. Quite disappointing from him. As for Guetta, when he switched left back in the second half, good substitution from Frank Lampard. Reese James came on really bright. Of course, we know his crossing abilities as well. He added more, another dimension to the game. Very dynamic. Of course, Aspilicueta wasn't too great down the right-hand side, as we know he is. He made a vital block in the second half to keep us in the game. World-class save from Kepa. I'm going to get on to Kepa in a minute because he had a very mixed game. Zuma and Tomori, I thought they were quite solid. They didn't have much to do. Of course, their second goal wasn't their fault on the first goal's reflection. Other than that, aerial jewels they dealt with. Very commanding, winning interceptions, reading the game was phenomenal as well. They were essentially a brick wall where none of the goals were their fault. So I think that, again, really solid performance from them too. Jorginho and Kovacic already mentioned them world-class, the way they controlled the game in the first 25 minutes. And we completely went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Man City and completely controlled the game. They controlled the midfield that I knew that we would do. For me, really, really good performances from them. And Kante as well, the scorer. 
he didn't have a fantastic game in the second. I thought first half was really, really bright, winning the balls, uh, winning interceptions, very lively. Of course, you know, high energy press, pressing very highly, winning the ball back. And I think it was very tactical and very clever for uh, Frank Lampard to play and go to Kante to Mason Mount. Uh, of course, Kante was phenomenal today, the way he was pressing and winning the ball back. And of course, he was our goal scorer. So for me, he would get a high rating from this game. And of course, the front three, Pulisic, very dynamic, the way he was dribbling past the players, assisting. He was our outlet and reminded me so much of Hazard, the way he moves the ball, the way he's agile, the way he drifts past players, dribbles, cuts in, etc. Really, really good from Pulisic. Unlucky not to get an assist or a goal, but very, very bright game from him. William as well. Oh, this guy, man, how many times, man, this guy... This guy, man. A lot of you look bum him. I know he's been decent this season, but honestly, man, he could not pick the correct dis decision to save his life. If his life was on the line, this guy is not making the right decision. I mean, this guy is so baffling, man. I mean, he had a few good moments, but his decision-making is dog shit. How? The guy is through on a 2v1, and he decides to shoot, man. I'm fucking done, honestly, this guy. He had a really good uh, opportunity in the start of the game, a couple of decent spells at the moment, but this guy's decision making is so poor. When he needs to shoot, he passes it. And even when he passes it, he overhits it or underhits it. When he needs to pass, he shoots. I mean, this guy, he's so frustrating to watch. He's absolutely unbelievable. We know what he was in the team for. He was in the team for, for the defensive duties. And of course, he did do his duties. But when it came to the offensive side, which. There wasn't enough from our wingers, it's as simple as that, especially from Willian. Of Abraham, a lot of people are going to put, you know, blame Abraham. I thought Abraham did very, very well. You saw him at the end when he came off. He was tired. He put in a shift today. The hold-up play, the link-up play, his running, the work rate was phenomenal. He just didn't get the service in this game. And that's why I was really happy when Rhys James came on. Again, because Emerson was getting 2v1, like I tactically explained, he wasn't able to get into the byline. If Emerson had a better game, Tammy would have got better service. We know Aspilicueta can't cross. He has that limitation. If we had Emerson and Reese James today, I know why Aspi was in the, in the team for, for the defensive work rate for that low to mid block. But if Reese James and Emerson was our fullback pairing, Tammy would have got better service and he would have got more chance. He didn't get one clear cut chance, unfortunately, but he worked his socks off. He had that work rate, his link up play, his passing, and you could tell by the end that he was knackered, sweating, etc. I mean, like I said, one thing that, that is clear to me is Frank Lampard, one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. I thought bringing Reese James on was, was really, really good. I thought that throughout the game, tactically as well, before the game, the lineup, tactically as well, to play, uh, play against Man City with a high press was clever. However, bringing off Jorginho was a stupid, was complete stupidity. I don't know what man was thinking. Man must have been smoking some LSD or something like that, or... Jesus Christ, he must have been on Ket or cocaine, whatever this guy was on the herbal essence, right? What was he smoking, bringing off Jorginho off? I know Mason Mount needs to come off for the, to begin to be an outlet to, for creativity, for pressing, because, you know, he has an eye for a goal. But bring him on for an N'Golo Kante or Kovacic. Why bring off Jorginho? Because as soon as Jorginho came off, we lost all control, the tempo was gone, and essentially that's why we were so slow in the transition. When we were winning the ball back after Man City counter-attack, we're pa passing it sideways, backwards, sideways, backwards, sideways, back to Kepper, back to the goalie. And I'm thinking, why? There is, It's not necessary, right? With Jorginho, he gives the control. He wins the ball back. He presses in those triangles and immediately we transition. We transition into the attacking phase. And, you know, he brings control. He orchestrates the game of the play. And bringing him off, you lose the complete control. And that's why Man City started to dominate more. And it looked like Man City were the team that needed to get the winner. It, it legitimately it was an idiotic decision, right? But apart from that, Lampard, he can't manage the game well. And finally, I want to talk about Kepa because this guy, he's been getting so much slate and criticism on, on social media, especially Twitter. He pulled off a world-class safe after a fine Aspilagueta block from Riyad Mahrez, so credits him for that. But for the disallowed goal right at the end when Man City made it 3-1 and it was later ruled offside by VAR, I'm sorry, man. Man has glass hands, fragile hands, whatever you want to say, man. This guy, he needs to fix up because he's a shadow of himself what he was last season. Last season, he was top quality, world class, one of the best keepers. I'm thinking this guy has amazing potential. I still believe that. One performance, I'm going to change it. But this season, he hasn't been at his best, clear to see. And one strong point he had was his distribution. And the guy in the first half, Man City should have made a 3 1. Literally gives it to Aguero on a plate, and Aguero misses a sitter, hits the crossbar. But one point here is. Even his best best attributes, distribution, he was so poor. It was woeful distribution. He shot something with his normally good. Again, the third goal that was disallowed, thankfully, saved us from embarrassment VAR. 
fragile hands, spaghetti hands. How are you letting that through? No top, no top keeper is letting that through. Very, very disappointing for him. And even for the first goal. Of course, the first goal, he couldn't do anything in the second goal. But for the third goal, and of course, for that distribution mistake, he needs to fix up, honestly. But I have faith in him. I know he'll fix up. He's a top keeper. So, yeah, we just got to fix up now. Luckily, it's only 2-1, not the 6-0 embarrassment from last year. So many positives to take with the high press. The top players have performed. We've got to kick it and go again. And now the Man City way is out of the way as well. So, that's really, really good news. But, yeah, if you did enjoy this review, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you are not around here. Make sure to hit the notification so for every time that uploads. And comment down below your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. And I'll leave you. see you guys for my next video. Peace.